yesterday I had a card. It was a very rare card. It was a pop five card. There had only been 15 ever graded. I was looking to sell it. I had a very reliable buyer on Instagram. We were messaging back and forth. He was very interested in buying. I was very interested in selling. We couldn't, uh, there was no definitive comp for the card because it was pop five highest in the grade. You see it on the thumbnail. It's the LeBron 2012 uh, Prism Green Parallel MVP insert. There's just not a lot of these out there for those of you that don't know. And we were trying to come up with the value of the card. I'm going to talk through the process of how we arrived at a fair market value and uh, came to terms on a sales price for this particular card today in this video. This should be a very helpful video for those of you out there who oftentimes struggle to figure out what the hell is a card worth when there's not a real you know, easy, plain and simple comp staring you in the face. How do I use card ladder to come to a decision of what I am confident that this card is worth? We're going to use card ladder. We're going to use card ladder indexes. We're going to use card ladder sales history. We're going to use different card ladder search terms today. And I'm going to show you how to find the value for your rare sports card that you're looking to either buy or sell. CY Card Ladder is the industry leader in sports card data. We know what you want because Card Ladder was created by collectors for collectors. Card Ladder, join the innovators, not the imitators. Hey guys, Brian with Cajun Cardboard coming at you from the great state of Louisiana. As I said in the intro, today's video is going to be about how you arrive at a fair market value for a card that just doesn't show up that much. And I'm going to show you a couple of different ways where you can sort of throw darts at it and sort of narrow it. You may not come to a, uh, a definitive binary, you know, yes or no answer on what a card's worth precisely. Uh, but with these rare cards, sometimes the best you can do is guesstimate, as they say down here in South Louisiana. Before we get started, I do want to let you guys know I now have an affiliate link that you guys can use. Today, we're going to use data that's provided by Card Ladder. I am an affiliate partner with Card Ladder. It is the only data pricing tool that I use in the way that I collect. And as you guys know, I move a lot of cards in and out of my collection. Knowing what those cards are worth is absolutely crucial, and Card Ladder is sort of my vehicle of choice when it comes to figuring out what a card that I want to buy is worth or what a card that I want to sell is worth. If you'd like to join Card Ladder and buy a subscription, it's extremely inexpensive. I even told the guys it's too cheap. You guys can use my Cajun Cardboard Card Ladder affiliate link. It is listed in this YouTube description and every YouTube description for every video that I do, and it is uh, enumerated number six. You can just cut and paste that link, and when you purchase your card ladder subscription, a teeny tiny piece of the subscription that you purchase will come back to support the Cajun Cardboard channel, and the folks that uh, run Card Ladder, who are uh, three good friends of mine, will know that me and my big mouth is actually doing my job and helping to promote Card Ladder. All right, now we're ready to get cranking. And you guys are probably wondering, what is this card? What are you selling, Cajun? Is it a Jordan? Is it a Jordan? No, it's not a Jordan. It was part of a little bit bigger deal. I think it was eight or nine Mike, uh, eight or nine LeBron James cards. I've got the card right here. Let's pull it up. I've got screen share here for you all. Uh, this is the card right there on your screen. 2012, first year Prism, yes. Green, what? Green, yes. Green was rare as a hell back then, and I've talked about it over and over. This is the MVP insert Green Parallel PSA 9 LeBron James card. Uh, so for those of you that don't know, we're going to click into this. This is in Card Ladder. We've got the last sale for this PSA 9 was in January of 2022. <coughs> Guys, a lot has changed since then. There's a lot of things to consider. You can't just look at the say, hey, the last PSA 9 sold for $995. It's yours. That's what it's worth. No, a lot of stuff has changed. The world has changed. A war started. An election's happening. Uh, LeBron James has done this. LeBron James is mentioned in Diddy. LeBron James has done steroids. Oh, by the way, LeBron James uh, twice since then has gone like 27, 6, and 6 and continues to defy father time. So a lot of good stuff's happened. A lot of bad stuff's happened. Not just a LeBron, but in the card market in general. So you can't just take a comp of the only sale in history of this card in a PSA 9 from 2022 and say, that's the value. So that 995 is helpful because that is 
maybe what it was worth, but what's another thing we got to look at? See this right here? Card Ladder does a great job of letting you know whether the card was sold at auction or for a fixed price. <clears throat> and what platform it was sold on over here. So this was a fixed price sale on eBay for $995. You would almost always rather it be an auction. It will give you a more accurate reflection of what the market truly values the card as because it is a uh, you know a fair process where anybody in the world can go bid on a particular card, whereas a fixed offer is just one seller who might be super desperate and one buyer who might be super aggressive. And so you never know what it's going to spit out with a fixed price or a buy it now. So you probably, or best offer, so you probably want to work with auctions if at all possible, but we don't have that option. So this is all we have. But what I wanted to show you is rare, rare, rare. It's only been graded 15 times by PSA and BGS, guys. There are five PSA 9s, so that throws another wrench into the equation, right? If your card is a PSA 9 and there's 11 PSA 10s, that is different than when you have a PSA 9 and there are no PSA 10s. This is best in class. So if there's LeBron collectors out there that want this particular card, and there are, uh, they will want the highest grade possible. Well, it matters that there are no PSA 10s out there. It makes the PSA 9 more attractive and more valuable. There is one BGS 10, which I would really love to put my eyes on. I think that would be really cool. Six BGS 9.5s and three BGS 9s as well, but a total of 15 graded by PSA and BGS. Somebody graded one with SGC and got a 9.5 as well. So this is important. It's also important to understand your product and your year and your parallels and just how many of them were printed. Green is retail only. <coughs> Green is super, super, super rare, uh, but um, that's beside the point. So where do you go from here? You know you can't sell it for $9.95. I don't know if that would be too much or too little. I just don't know because it was in 2022. So the first thing that you do is uh, you sort of have in the back of your mind, and we're going to look at this a little bit closer, LeBron cards, are they up or are they down? If this is a Jordan card that sold in 2022, you would most assuredly assume that it will be worth more today, right? Depending, again, you wish you had more data, you wish you had three fixed price sales or a couple of auctions and a fixed price and a buy, you know, best offer, but we don't have that. All we got is what we see on our screen. So the first thing I would do is I would look up, uh, you know, first of all, you look up your card and your grade. Well, that's all I got, right? So then you look up your card in other grades, same player, okay? So the first thing I did was I changed my search in card ladder sales history, which is pulling from every database that you could possibly imagine going back to who the hell knows when. This goes back to 2013 where it sold for 50 bucks uh, raw, but that's a downtown right there. So I am looking specifically, and this is why my search has this. I've got open parentheses, MVP, comma, most. The reason I have that is because it might be listed as most valuable player spelled out in one of these sales, in one of these titles on eBay or Fanatics or wherever. It might also be listed <coughs> as just MVP. And so this, uh, this method of search catches everything. So I'm going to catch MVP or most valuable, not to the exclusion of the other. So either one of those, it's going to pull. And so here's what I've got. If I wanted to, I could put in minus downtown, minus USA, minus this and that. But I think we're going to be pretty accurate. I got 16 results. Okay, so that's helpful. Now we know that's a bigger number. But let's see exactly what we have. Best offer, best offer, fixed price. Here we are back in 2021. Again, what this card sold for in a BGS 9.5 in 2021 is data, but it's not reliable data. And then you've got best offer, best offer, and fixed price for three sales. We're about to look at a little bit closer, but those are not auctions. So you really wish there was an auction, an open market, which would be more reflective of what the value is, but let's work with what we got. Okay, so let's go here with the most recent sale. It was an eBay sale of this card in a uh, BGS 9.5 holder. It was a best offer, and this is very recent. This is just a couple months ago, but look at the number. It sold for $3,700 right here, people, okay? I, I don't know if this card is worth $3,700. I don't know if this is a scam deal. I don't know if this is a fix. I don't know what's going on, but you can go into eBay and you can kind of go look at that sale a little bit closer. You can look at the seller. They had 737 feedback, so that's encouraging, right? Carlotta provides that data. If it said feedback one, what would you do? What would I do? I would completely ignore it if it had feedback one, if it had feedback 11. People with one feedback 
or 11 feedback don't even own this card. They just don't. It just doesn't work that way. I mean, is it possible? Sure, it's possible, but it's not likely. So there's some data right there, a $3,700 sale. But how about this? Let's go back one year prior. The card sold for $1,950. It's the exact same grade, BGS 9.5. Well, we know LeBron cards did not double from 2023 to 2024. If anything, they went down from May 2023 to August 2024. Even rare ones like this in highest grade uh, or almost highest grade, I guess there's a BGS 10 out there, went down. So it definitely didn't go up 100% in value from 1950 uh, to 37, you know, almost 100% to 3,700. What about this? And then the next one we got is what? It's our same PSA 9 comp from way back in 2022. So here's where we're at. We know, we think the card is worth somewhere between 3,700 and maybe $500 because if you ask me, maybe the card's worth less today than it was worth in 2022 because LeBron prices have gone down. Well, what's another way we can try to arrive at a comp? Well, one way is we can go look at sales of this product this year, this parallel for similar players, okay? Similar players. Well, that's tough because we're talking about LeBron James. If this is Anthony Davis or Bradley Beal or Clay Thompson, maybe, but I'm trying to think only Steph Curry would be relatively similar and comparable. So we'll look just to look. This is another way you can do it. Again, this is not going to be really helpful in this scenario, but I want to show you another thing you can do is if you've got a super rare card, uh, PMGs, for example, when I was collecting the red PMG set, maybe I would see um, a Chris Weber sale. Um, you know, uh, I have a Chris Weber card, and uh, Chris Weber PMG red hadn't sold in uh, three years or something like that. But you know what? Jason Kidd had sold. And so those are kind of comparable players. Or maybe you have an Allen Houston, um, but uh, you, you don't have an Allen Houston comp. So maybe you look for a Terrell Brandon sale, or, you know, um, you know maybe a. Um, you know, one of those semi-stars. I'm trying to think of some more semi-stars. A Ronnie Cycli sale or whatever. You get the point. So you can look at other players of similar super rare cards and super rare parallels and sort of maybe work your way and get a little bit more confidence in what the value of your card is here. So here's a Shaq PSA 9. A Shaq PSA 9 sold for 365. Well, the Shaq LeBron disparity in value for cards, specifically in the 2000s, is uh, is a, a journey and a quest in and of itself, and it ain't going to be easy, right? Uh, and here's a Carl Malone that sold for 43, so that just shows you how much people think about Carl Malone in comparison to Shaquille O'Neal. It sold six days apart for uh, like one-eighth of the value, one-ninth of the value or something like that. So we know that there's like a nine-to-one multiplier there for Shaq and Carl Malone, uh, and these are, uh, this is a best offer for Shaq as well. So again, we don't really have an auction for the Shaq. We had an auction, would it have sold for 100 20 would it have sold for you know 400 who knows we don't really know uh and then you've got derrick rose because it's pulling mvp <coughs> so if i wanted to go up here i would probably put let's get rid of those roses and i just saw a nick Foles, and it said mvp so let's pull that so now we're getting more accurate data magic johnson 215 that's about right shack out sells magic for sure uh shack 275 Oscar Robertson, 59. Now you're looking at set collector types, right? Uh, you know, Wilt Chamberlain, 37. These are not going to be super helpful for us. There's Bird right on the number, almost exactly what the Mag you know, the Shaq and the Magic are going for. So um, this is not super helpful because, you know, if you're going to you know, use the multiplier to get from Shaq to LeBron, you're what are you going to do? 3X, 5X, I don't know, something like that. That still doesn't really help us. That does give you a little sense of comfort. Well, if Shaq's 365, LeBron's easily 800, 900, right? Uh, minimum, but maybe as much as 2,000, just depending on how you want to do the multiplier. If we really wanted to dig in and kind of get closer, we could look at multipliers on other Shaq versus George. Um, Shaq versus LeBron, Magic versus LeBron, Bird versus LeBron, but that's really, really hard to do because there's significantly more Shaq collectors than Bird and Magic collectors, specifically in the 2000s, and then there's way more LeBron collectors, I think, than Shaq collectors in the 2000s. Now, in the 1990s, there are a lot of people that collect Shaq 90s cards, but there's much fewer people that collect Shaq, uh, many fewer people that collect Shaq cards in the 2000s. So even between players, you got to look at the era of the card and where it is in relation to their playing career and how relevant they were at that time. 
uh, and and kind of apply that as well. So it's not a perfect science is what I'm getting at. So we've looked at a couple ways. First, you look up your card. If you don't have it, you look up other grades of your card, same player. If you can't figure it out from there, you just start to build evidence and right and come to kind of come to terms. Then you can look at other similar similarly situated players with similar resumes. Or even if you don't have similar resumes, you could sort of use uh, price comparison ratios to go from Shaq to LeBron or from LeBron to Curry. It would be really nice if there was a Curry in here, um, but I don't see a Curry, but he may not have been, oh, well, he wasn't an MVP. Maybe he didn't have an MVP, so he might not be in the set. I guess there's really nobody else in that set that would necessarily compare to LeBron or be as collectible as LeBron. So that is uh, super not helpful at all. So the next thing uh, we can do is what about other green parallel inserts in 2012 Prism for LeBron? Well, that's another way to do it. So I would say the MVP inserts are the most valuable and you just got to know this stuff. The card ladder can't give you the answer to this. The MVP inserts are probably the best inserts. Then after that, you've probably got the downtown bound inserts. And then after that, you've got the USA inserts uh, in some order. But you you definitely can't compare uh, the uh, this MVP insert to a true green parallel base LeBron like this card right here. Because this is always going to be more valuable than the insert parallel in the 2000s for sure. And that, maybe not in... The 90s, but in the 2000s, people want the base parallel more than they want the insert green parallel. Does that make sense? So this PSA 9 uh, green base, even though it is a much higher pop, and it's been graded many more times, obviously it's been graded 65 times, right, compared to what did we say, 16, 15, whatever, 67 times if you include CSG for whatever reason, uh, <clears throat> this is just a much bigger card. Now, here's the other thing. There's PSA 10s of this card, and there's not PSA 10s of the green insert that I'm looking for, the MVP insert. So that's important to keep in mind as well. But all that being said, this recently sold at auction. That's good. I say recently. It was over a year ago at auction for $2,500. So I can use this information right here. This is apples to oranges. But it gives me some sense of comfort. My card's not worth $2,500. This card that I'm trying to find the value of, it's not $2,500, okay? So now we've limited it somewhere, you know, what are we, 500 to 2,500? Uh, that's kind of where I'm at. And I'm. Just, this is like real-time way that me and my guy through Instagram messaging, we're trying to figure out what the card's worth. He'd send me comps. I'd send him comps. I showed him these two BGS 9.5 sales, which were very much heavily in my favor. But I know that they're unreliable because it doubled in the course of a year. So I would say this is probably more indicative than this. I agreed with him. We can throw out the 3,700 because a BGS 9.5 LeBron card from 23 to 24 should not be doubling in value. I know it didn't because I've got LeBron cards and I know they went down in value. So we know this I'm throwing out and I agreed with him. I'm like, look, I'm with you. That's not a good comp. I'm not using it. Nice hardwood floors, but I'm not using it. Then again, we didn't even talk about the subgrades. That subgrades matter. This is a quad gem, right? This card right here is not a quad gem. It's a min gem. So this is a superior card, but is it twice the value for one half of one subgrade, one surface half grade? No, it's probably not. So I'm now got a 1950 value that I can use. I know that the Shaq is worth about 365, so LeBron's going to be easily 900. So I've sort of got in that 900 to 1900 range somewhere in there, and then I've got <coughs> I've got this as a ceiling. Well, we know this card is not going to be worth $2,500. So we're somewhere probably between $900 and $1,900. What else can we do? Well, we can look at the LeBron James Index. And what's the LeBron James Index? Well, this is uh, an, an accumulation that Card Ladder provides for various players, some of the bigger name players that people collect. LeBron James is one of them. It's a robust index. I love saying robust. It's a robust index. It means there's a shitload of cards in there. 1,091 cards, right? I've got it highlighted right here. <clears throat> well, we're looking at two years, right? So what do we have for my PSA 9? We have a two-year-old comp, a little bit more than two years old. And uh, it was 995 back then. So this index would indicate uh, that LeBron cards are down 61%. So that would mean that the card would be worth much less than 995. But the cards that are included in the LeBron card ladder index are not reflective necessarily of a highest grade 
PSA 9, Pop 5, where only 15 have ever been graded. You're working with a different beast. If this was a silver LeBron Prism PSA 9 <coughs> from 2012, this index would be very helpful. But the index is just not as helpful. And uh, the other thing is LeBron cards have started to move up. So over the last two years, down 61%. And that is a big index. But again, it's not super helpful for me because my card is so much more rare but if we look at LeBron over the last, what, three months, check that out. That's up 9%. So this LeBron card's starting to move, which is part of the reason why I'm ready to sell and part of the reason why the buyer is willing to buy. He thinks LeBron cards are on the uptick. He thinks he's buying near the bottom. He probably is. And, uh, and I'm looking to get out just to hedge risk and to go buy more Michael Jordan cards. It's really that simple. Uh, and then the last thing <laughs> is uh, I just want to show you there's the card. There's my actual card that's sitting in my vault. So... <coughs> Card Ladder says the value of the card today is 264 but again, I love Card Ladder. That is probably not, uh, again, they don't go through and look at each one of these cards and make individual decisions and use this and that, and they don't go into the detail that we're going into on this video. They're simply taking the sale of this card in this grade that we know right here of 995 and they're simply applying the index. They're simply taking this minus uh, whatever we were, you know, and this is not a perfect two years, but it's close. They're simply taking a 61% growth rate, which is a, not a growth rate, it's a drop rate, right? The negative, and they're applying it to 995 and they're doing simple math. They're taking 61% off of 995 and guess what comes up? 268, but guess what else Card Ladder does? I've got it highlighted right here. I don't know if y'all can read that on your screen. I'll read it to you. Card Ladder has a confidence meter. So when you look at Card Ladder's estimated value, if you see one bar, that, just to be fair to my people, that means they're pretty damn much guessing. The card hasn't sold in forever, and so they don't have a ton of reliable data, and so they put this little blurb in here to explain to you what that confidence meter means. Card ladder value seeks to reflect the card's current market price. It is determined by anchoring the card's last sold price to the player's total market index. So, like I just said, all card ladder's doing, and this is an algorithm that was created by the folks at Card Ladder who are very intelligent people, but they know they can't master the hobby. There's millions and millions and millions of cards, so they can't look into the minutia and the fine details uh, and make any distinction. This would be the same formula that would be applied to a 2012 base LeBron PSA 9, which is a very, very inexpensive high pop card. There is only one way. They're just trying to be helpful, but the purpose of the confidence meter is to say, hey buddy, you need to chill out. We think it's worth about 268, but we have a very low confidence meter because it's taken Cajun Cardboard 20 minutes now, and we still don't have any idea what the damn card's worth. So we're just completely, we're just simply multiplying the last sold comp of your card in your grade by the index, and this is what it's spitting out. So um, the index fluctuates day to day, so does the card ladder value. Now that is good because it's a living, breathing, uh, evergreen algorithm, and uh, it works really well on, uh, on certain cards. Like if we uh, took out this, watch this. And we took out green, and let's just plug in silver uh, on a card like, uh, and let's take out select. Uh, boom, there we go. So, nope, that's not a silver. That's going to be, wrong. there we go. There's a silver card. So, the silver LeBron PSA 9 is a pop 48. Not a high pop card by any means, but look what they've done. Uh, this is not going to be uh, the last sold price um, you know, it's going to be the last sold price. Well, this is not two years ago. This was very recent. This is a couple months ago. And so your sold price was 3,700. Look what the card ladder value is and look how many meters it has under there. It has three out of five selected. Why? Because it recently sold. Sold a couple months ago, uh, three months ago, almost to the day. And so 3720 in the card ladder value is more. Card ladder thinks it's more. Well, well, Cajun, why does card ladder think this card's worth more when the green one they said was worth, you know, 61% less? Well, because we're not measuring from a two years ago on the index. We're measuring from the last six months. And what did we say had happened to the LeBron for the last, uh, it's actually three months. LeBron cards are up 8.91%. So this is essentially simply 3720 times 1.89. That's really all it is. You're, like you're moving the value up 8.9%. That's what Card Ladder thinks. And even then, it's not a five-bar deal. It's a three-bar deal, right? 
Uh, so always keep that in mind when you're looking at card ladder value. Is it a helpful tool? Yes, it's a helpful tool, but it is a much more helpful tool if a card has sold recently, if there are five bars or four bars filled up, and if it's a relatively high pop card that you can kind of find comps for in various grades. This is not that situation. Uh, but there's the card. Uh, there's the card ladder value. And again, I'm in my Fanatics Collect Vault. It's a pop five, none higher, just like we looked at. The back of the card's the same image, but these are just good looking cards, guys. I mean, uh, I ended up selling it. What do you guys think I sold the card for? Um, so we know it's, uh, we think it's worth, I think it's worth more than 900 right? We've tried the other player, we tried the other grade method, and that's really the best way to arrive at a value because we tried to do the other player method right here, and Shaq's really the closest thing you can get. I wish Curry was in there, and then we could use the Curry method, right? The Curry's not in there. We tried to use the other LeBron inserts method, and the downtown bound is a less valuable card. It sold, that's still way more, you know, that's a year ago, basically, for 500. We know it's worth less than 2,500, because that's the base parallel, and this is just a much, much bigger card. So we knew it was somewhere between, you know, what, 900 and, and 1,900. We settled on 1500 uh, and I thought that was fair. I was fine. I got more than it sold for in uh, 2022, and the buyer, I think, was happy because he has multiple copies of this. So he is a big, big, big LeBron collector and is not bashful about acquiring multiple copies. So he's a LeBron collector and an investor, and I think he's savvy enough to think and no, and as long as everything stays, you know, status quo with LeBron, his cards are hitting the bottom and bouncing up, as we saw from the index. It's clear that it's undeniable, and uh, he thinks he's buying at or near the bottom, and uh, I'm probably selling at or near the bottom, but, you know, again, I... You know, I have LeBron cards, but if I can move a LeBron card and pick up uh, a Michael Jordan card that tickles my fancy, I'm going to do it. And that's what I did. So we agreed on a $1,500 uh, sale price, uh, net PayPal friends and family, which is a win for me. It's He's happy with it from his end. Uh, let me know what you think that card's worth. I mean, it's again, here, let's go back to it. It's real simple. There's a card. You guys can go look it up. Do your own research. Uh, there are other things we could have definitely looked at. We could have looked at 2013 Prism, but... The further away you get from your actual card, whether it's grade, going to a different insert, going to a different player entirely, certainly when you go to a different year product where like 2013 Prism was probably double the print run of 2012 Prism, and you know there's that first year Prism multiplier that needs to be applied. There is a premium for first year Prism. There's just too many factors to consider. So sometimes you run across cards like this, guys. If you collect Michael Jordan cards in the 90s, you're oftentimes going to run across cards like this. And here's where it gets scary. Uh, you know, I recently bought a 1998 Precious Metal Gems. Good luck finding enough comps in your grade to feel really comfortable. 90% of those deals are private deals, number one. Um, it's very rarely the same grade because there's only 50 of them in the world. So you've only got a limited single digit number in your particular grade. And they're almost all waiting. They're, very rarely are they auctions. It used to be that way, but very rarely now. It's usually private. It's usually, you know, you're asking around. You're usually comparing 98 PMG to 97 championship PMG to 97 red PMG. You're comparing PSA 6s to BGS 8s. You got to do some, uh, what do we call it? Uh, let's say Cajun logical leaping, right? You've got to leap from A, if A, then B. And, uh, you know, if you're thinking and your logic is flawed and you haven't been around in the hobby long enough to sort of understand how great interactions work and how cards rank in a hierarchical comparison between each other, especially when you're dealing with six-figure cards, you may buy a card for 165 it was worth 125 or, or worse. The even worse feeling would be you may sell a card for 125 that you probably could have got 175 for. That's where you really start to feel it. Now, on this card, you know, we sold it for 1500 Could the card be worth a thousand? Some of you guys are going to watch this video and say, that card's worth $800. Some of you guys are going to watch this video and say, I'd have bought that card for 20, 2250 you know? So, and that's, that's you know, a, a little miss one way or the other, right? That's a little miss on either side, a little standard deviation. But if, uh, you know,
know, if you're talking about a car that's worth 100 grand and you buy it for 60 or you sell it for 60 or you buy it for 140 or you sell it for 140, now you're talking real big numbers. And so this is just sort of my thought process and how I go about valuing a car that you can't find very often. And there are probably 10 or 12 other things that I could do to get closer and get more comfortable, um, but I'm never going to get it. It's not going to be an exact science because it's just not there. The data is just not there. Um, because if it was, Card Ladder would have it. And so uh, let me know what I left out. I mean, again, there are other ways that I would go to get comfortable with what the value of the card was. But when we arrived at 1500 I was like, it ain't worth it. My time is almost as valuable as you know the money that I would recoup. If I got another $100 out of it, but it took me three hours to do it, well, that's three hours of my time where I could have been making money at my job or on this channel or buying or selling other cards. And so uh, there is definitely a time uh, money um, comparison analysis to, to do as well. So there is a law of diminishing returns. The further and the more attenuated you get from your actual card, the less reliable the data is anyway, right? And so um, that's just my thought process. This was exactly the steps that I took to arrive at a price that I was comfortable selling this particular card with. I am curious to know what you think that card's worth in uh, the comments. And I'm sure it's funny because some people are going to think that the guy stole it from me and I'm an idiot. And some people are going to think that I robbed the guy and he's an idiot. And it's just funny, uh, but it will make for great conversation. And uh, let me know if you guys have any other tips or tricks because I'm always trying to help people make sure, whether they're investors or collect, this is not just an investor video, right? This is, you know, if you're building a LeBron collection or a Jordan collection or a Steph Curry collection or a Kobe collection or uh, God forbid an Isaiah Thomas collection, the old one, uh, you're going to want to make sure you're buying cards at fair market value. <laughs> you know, whether you're intending to buy it and flip it in six months or buy it and hold it forever, you don't want to overpay for a card and you don't want to undersell a card. So this video really appeals, I would hope, to collectors and investors alike. And I'd like to elicit information from uh, all of you fine folks in the hobby that are watching this video. How do you arrive at a comp on a rare card like this? This applies to vintage. This applies to hockey. This applies to Pokemon. This applies to 2000s collectors, 90s collectors, baseball, basketball, football. None of that matters. It applies to all that when you've got rare cards that just don't come to market very often. How do you back into a fair market value comp for your card? Thank you guys for watching. Keep collecting. Don't forget, if you want to subscribe to Card Ladder, if you want to use the data that I used, if you want access to the pop reports from all the different grading companies, if you want the Card Ladder value, if you want to look at indexes, if you want to make sound decisions based on the general tendencies of the market and the sales data from the market in general or your particular index for your sport or your player, Card Ladder is definitely the way to go, the way to do it. Go into this YouTube description right now cut and paste that affiliate link into your web browser, old people. Just cut, right-click, cut, paste it into your little internet window thing at the top and uh, hit enter and go buy a card ladder subscription. They'll you know draw it from your account. You never have to think about it again. And anytime you want to know how much something's worth, you just go straight to it. I can't tell you how many messages I get from people saying, what do you think this card's worth? And it's a card that's like pop 300. And I'm like, dude, Again, I am not, you know, I'm not Trump or Obama or, you know, Biden. I'm not that busy, but damn, dude, I got a lot going on. I'm not here to comp cards for you. So I just reply card ladder. <laughs> go, go buy card ladder. You know, again, I love you guys, but I can't be comping people's cards for them, especially when they're cards that are very easy to find. Sometimes I'll send them a picture and it'll be like, here's 10 sales in the last 30 days, dude. Why am I doing this for you? I love you, but come on, you got to be able to comp your own cards. Card ladder's the way to go. So that's the deal. Thank you guys for watching. Keep collecting. Stay positive in the hobby. And peace.